Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about the important concepts of antibacterials. This is the part 3 of our video series and we are going to continue with the discussion of important concepts in question and answer format. 13th one. Which of the following drugs can produce phototoxicity? Options are P. Streptomycin Q. Clarithromycin R. Levofloxin S. Demiclocycline. So here we have to select few of the drugs which are going to produce a phototoxicity. So A. P and S B. Q and R C. P and Q and D. R and S So what is the right answer for this question? So the correct answer is R and S. Levofloxin is one of the drug which is a fluoroquinone antibiotic and this is a third generation fluoroquinone and demiclocycline is one of the tetracycline. These tetracyclines and fluoroquinones can produce a phototoxicity. So whenever the patients are indicated with these fluoroquinones and tetracyclines for longer periods, they should not be directly exposed to the sunlight which may produce some phototoxicity resulting in skin rashes and itching. So among the antibacterials, these two categories, fluoroquinones and tetracyclines, mainly show the phototoxicity. On the other hand, the option P is the streptomycin, which is a aminoglycoside antibiotic, and Q is the clarithromycin, which is a macrolide antibiotic, which are not associated with the significant phototoxicity. So here the right answer is levofloxin and demiclocycline. Fourteenth one, which of the following is a broad spectrum antibiotic? A. Moxifloxin B. Piperacillin C. Clindamycin D. Doxycycline So we have to select the drug which is a broad spectrum antibiotic. The right answer is Doxycycline. Doxycycline is one of the tetracycline and tetracyclines are called as broad spectrum antibiotics because these tetracyclines are effective against the various types of organisms. For example, they are effective against the gram-positive as well as gram-negative infections. And apart from this bacteria, tetracyclines are also effective against the other types of infections like chlamydial infections and uh, spirochetes, mycoplasma infections, rickettsia infections. In all these infections, tetracyclines are effective. That's why they are called as broad-spectrum antibiotics. And because of their broad spectrum of activity, whenever tetracyclines are given, they can produce some super infections because they can inhibit the protective gut flora resulting in the super infections. Even the tetracyclines are the broad spectrum antibiotics, but in most of the infections, they are getting some resistance. And here we can also discuss another category of drugs that is the ampicillin and amoxicillin, which are classified as extended spectrum penicillins. Even sometimes they are classified as broad spectrum, but actually their category is the extended spectrum because their spectrum of activity is extended from the gram positive to the gram negative infections. But ampicillin and amoxicillin are not useful for the other types of infections. So they are practically not the broad spectrum antibiotics. They are mainly considered as extended spectrum antibiotics. Fifteenth one. Which of the following drug may increase QT interval in ECG? A. Televancin B. Azithromycin C. Vancomycin D. Chloramphenicol. So here which type of drug can increase a QT interval within the ECG? The right answer is Televancin. Televancin is one of a lipoglycopeptide which can increase the QT interval within the ECG thereby it can precipitate one of the fatal condition torsade D point is. This torsade D point is a fatal cardiac arrhythmias which should be immediately treated. And many of the drugs can increase the QT interval like the class 3 antiarrhythmic agents like the imidarone, sotalol. Similarly, if you have the antipsychotics like the chlorpromzine and haloperidol. And here within the antibacterials, if you have the fluoroquinones like the moxifloxin can also increase the QT interval. Thereby, they can precipitate the torsade D point is. Even the macrolides like azithromycin can also increase the QT interval at toxic dose. But at the therapeutic dose, they are not interfering with the QT interval. So here the right answer is the Televancin, which is a lipoglycopeptide which can increase the QT interval within the ECG. Sixteenth one, which of the following antibacterial should be carefully given along with the furosemide? Options are A. Clindamycin, B. Methinamine, C. 
trimethoprim d tobramycin so furosemide is a loop diuretic so along with uh, loop diuretic which type of antibacterial should be carefully given the right answer is tobramycin why tobramycin should be carefully given along with the furosemide furosemide is a loop diuretic it can produce various renal actions but apart from these renal actions furosemide can also produce some non renal actions resulting in the ototoxicity because of this ototoxicity furosemide can produce some vestibular disorders like vertigo tinnitus as well as loss of hearing that's why furosemide should be carefully given with the other drugs which again produce the ototoxicity so here we have to select the drug which is producing the ototoxicity so tobramycin is a aminoglycoside antibiotic aminoglycosides can produce the ototoxicity as well as nephrotoxicity so aminoglycosides like the tobramycin when they are given along with the furosemide they can increase the ototoxicity that's why these two drugs should be carefully combined in order to prevent the ototoxicity 17th one sulfuramides are contraindicated with a linezolid b methinamine c trimethoprim d vancomycin so with which drug sulfuramides are contraindicated the right answer is methinamine methinamine is one of the drug which is also called as urotropin and this drug is used to treat the urinary tract infections this methinamine is going to be splitted within the urine to produce one of the important active metabolite methinamine is made up of methyl groups as well as amine groups so in presence of acidic ph methinamine is converted into formaldehyde as well as ammonia this formaldehyde shows the antibacterial activity but when this methinamine is given along with the sulfuramides what will happen now sulfuramides can react with this formaldehyde such that the formaldehyde is condensed resulting in the loss of activity of formaldehyde so in presence of sulfuramides meth becomes ineffective because sulfuramides are reacting with the formaldehyde 18th one sulfuramides increase plasma levels of which of the following drug a trimethoprim b carbamazepine c etorvastatin d methotrexate so sulfuramides are showing some drug interaction with one of the drug and they increase the levels of the drug so what is the drug the right answer is methotrexate methotrexate is one of the anti cancer agent which is an anti folate this drug is going to inhibit the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme thereby inhibits the conversion of folic acid into the dihydrofolic acid as well as to the tetrahydrofolic acid thereby it interferes with the folic acid utilization in the thymidine synthesis but how this methotrexate can interact with the sulfonamide so methotrexate can bind with the plasma proteins so whenever methotrexate is administered it can bind to these plasma proteins but at the same time sulfonamide which is having the more affinity towards the plasma proteins it can compete with the methotrexate and it can interact with the protein binding site thereby it can displace the methotrexate i mean presence of sulfonamides methotrexate is going to be displaced from the protein binding sites which increase the free levels of the methotrexate resulting in its increased act. in this way in presence of sulfonamides the plasma levels of methotrexate are elevated because of protein displacement sulfonamides can show protein binding interactions with so many types of drugs like methotrexate warfarin so these drugs are going to be displaced from the protein binding sites by the sulfonamides and sulfonamides can be combined with the trimethoprim we have one of the combination sulfamethoxol plus trimethoprim this combination produces a synergistic effect where sulfonamides are going to inhibit the folic acid synthesis and trimethoprim is going to inhibit the reduction of the folic acid so this combination is suitable in the treating of uh, pneumocystis carinae pneumoniae as well as to treat the urinary tract infections and other drugs in the option b and c are not interacting with the sulfonamides so the right answer here is the methotrexate 19th one quinopristine and dalfopristine are combined in a ratio of a 1:5 b 10:1 C one is to four, D three is to seven. So, what is the ratio of combination of quinopristine and dalfopristine? The right answer is three to one. 
3 is to quinopristin and dalfopristin are the two drugs which are chemically belonging to the streptogramins. These drugs are not given alone, always they are given in a combination at a ratio of uh, 3 is to 7, that is a 30% of quinopristin and 70% of dalfopristin are going to be combined. And these streptogramines when they are given produce the synergistic effect and they can bind with the 50S subunit so that they can form a ternary complex, thereby they can inhibit the protein synthesis. So in order to improve the activity, always they are given in a combination at a ratio of 3 is to 7. 3 parts of phenopristine and 7 parts of dalfopristine. 20th one. Which of the following drug inhibits formation of 70S initiation complex? A. Clindamycin B. Linezolid C. Doxycycline D. Chloramphenicol So in the bacteria, protein synthesis mainly have three steps, initiation, elongation and termination. Most of the antibiotics are acting on the elongation process, but one of the antibacterial acts on initiation step. So what is the drug? The right answer is linezolid. Other drugs mainly acting on the elongation step, clindamycin is going to inhibit the translocation just like the macrolides. Doxycycline is a tetracycline which is going to inhibit the attachment of tRNA to the 30S ribosome. And chloramphenicol is one of the drugs which is going to inhibit the transpeptidation. So all these are acting on the elongation steps within the bacterial protein synthesis. But linezolid is one of the drugs which is going to bind to the 50S subunit, thereby it prevents the attachment of 30S subunit to form a 70S initiation complex. So linezolid is only the drug which is acting on the initiation step, thereby it prevents the formation of 70S initiation complex, which is actually responsible for the initiation of the protein synthesis. So these are the few of the important concepts from the antibacterials. In our next video, we will come with more important concepts in question and answer format. So that's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.